I did a video not so long ago where I outlined my four favourite ETFs on the Trading212 platform. The first one was VUSA, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. This is a stock market index that tracks the performance of the largest 500 companies listed on the US stock exchange. The second ETF was ticker VUK. This is the Vanguard FTSE 100 ETF, which is another stock market index that tracks the largest 100 companies listed on the UK's London Stock Exchange. The third ETF was the Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend Yield, ticker symbol VHYL. This index is comprised of large and mid-sized companies in developed and emerging markets that pay dividends that are generally higher than average. An emerging market economy is the economy of a developing nation that is becoming more engaged with global markets as it grows. Currently, some notable emerging market economies include India, Mexico, Russia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, China and Brazil. And finally, the fourth ETF was the S&P 500 Low Volatility High Dividend ETF from Invesco, ticker HDLG. This measures the performance of the 50 least volatile high dividend yielding stocks in the S&P 500. During my investing journey, I have been adding to these extremely consistently, and they make up around 30% of my portfolio so far. I have recently added to these by starting a position in a new ETF, EUHD, which is Invesco's high dividend low volatility fund based around dividend paying European companies. So why have I chosen this? I believe that ETFs are a great way to diversify out some of the risk associated with companies cutting their dividends. I like to hold VUSA, VUK, VHYL and HDLG as it gives me exposure to a massive array of companies and markets all over the world. If we look at a map of the world, my current ETFs were covering these countries' economies. We can see a very clear disparity in Europe, apart from the UK and I felt that my portfolio would benefit from the increased exposure to this market. So now let's take a further look into this ETF. There are 50 stocks in the fund, and it's currently trading at £21.70, and has an ongoing management charge of 0.3%. Put simply, for every £10,000 you invest, you pay £30 per year, so it is very minimal. The current distribution yield of the ETF is 4.14% and these are paid quarterly. So now let's look at the top 10 companies that constitute this fund. To be honest, at first glance, I'd only heard of Orange and AXA before, but I don't need to worry about that with an ETF, as this fund will choose the top 50 dividend payers into the fund. So if one company isn't performing, it'll be replaced. Then if we look at the sector split for the ETF, we can see that utilities, financials, communication and energy make up 75% of this fund. It's not really surprising to see these sectors take up such a large percentage of the fund, as these are the sectors that tend to pay higher dividends because of their stable cash flows. And if we look at which countries those companies reside in, we can see why this ETF will benefit my portfolio. All of the companies in my portfolio before buying this ETF were mainly based in the US or the UK. So now I have some exposure to the rest of the European markets. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, you'll know that at the forefront of my strategy is to buy assets that generate cash flow, and this investment is no different. So let's take a look at the quarterly distributions for this ETF. Investors are used to receiving dividends when they own shares, but when they receive income from their ETFs, it's called a distribution. A distribution represents your share of the income earned by the investments held by that fund. So it's up to the ETF to collect all the forms of income and profit made by the fund and pay it out to the unit holders as distributions. Looking at the quarterly distribution history, we can see them to be quite erratic and tend to jump up and down a lot. This is quite normal for ETF distributions, just because the payments are coming from a large number of companies rather than just one. So as companies pay their dividends over different periods, this is reflected in the ETF distributions. 
Also, some companies within the fund will have big dividend increases, some will cut their dividend, and some will remain steady. So, the ETF payouts are a mixture of each individual company's actions. I personally find it beneficial to also look at the yearly distributions, as we can see a much clearer picture. We can see that the fund was increasing its distributions prior to 2020, when it nearly dropped by half. But 2021 did see some signs of recovery. Now let's line up all five ETFs alongside each other to compare and contrast some of the numbers that I've mentioned. By combining these five ETFs at an equal 20% ratio, it allows me to obtain a 3.12% dividend yield. Also, by combining the five, I can average out the ongoing management charge to 0.21%. As a UK investor, being able to purchase these ETFs in GBP means that I can invest in overseas company but won't be exposed to any exchange rate fluctuation risks from GBP to euros. I have a lot of individual stocks in my portfolio and I want to protect my dividend payouts by having at least 40% of the portfolio as ETFs. My plan for EUHD is the same as my other ETFs and stocks and that is to dollar cost average over the long term and then reinvest all dividends. I currently have around 30% of my portfolio in ETFs, so over the next five years I aim to keep investing regularly in these five ETFs to hit my target ratio. I hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and I hope it's given you inspiration and ideas for your own personal finances. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any future videos. Also, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.